So what we're going to do now is going to do the, the 10 form and try to incorporate good Tai Chi posture, shifting of weight ba to balance better, and um, all those principles that we've gone over, knee not be on the toe, using the, using the core to turn, to rotate, okay? Using our hips and waist to drive our motions, okay? So good Tai Chi posture, what is that? Head erect, chin slightly down, middle finger to the side seam so that our shoulders are dropped, our chest is sunken, our butt is tucked in there, our knee now is not bent or anything in between, it's just relatively loose and not locked in, but ready for energy to flow. Tongue on our palate, good thoughts going on. Commencing form. Shift weight to the right, feeling the right foot getting heavier, getting the left heel up because it's transferring the energy. On the toe, we're going to open 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, even distribution. Hands rotate to the middle of the thigh as we take a deep breath in as we elevate both hands. At shoulder level, we reverse the process. We drop our shoulders, we flex our knees, we make ourselves small. Left hand in the middle, right hand rises up higher as we glance. We open the palms to the ceiling. We bring the back hand to our ear. We turn our head and neck. We meet in the center and we pull back, we push forward. Other side, left hand rises higher, open to the ceiling, glance at the back hand as it comes to the ear, turn the head and neck, meet in the center, push forward, pull back. Repulse of the monkey. Okay, so are your, is your uh, right hand like where mine is, sitting at the hip? Is your left hand pushing or catching the ball in the center of you. Now we're ready for the next movement. We're going into a T stance and we're gonna set it up correctly to brush our knee. T stance first, right hand higher, left hand to the shoulder, weight on the right. We're gonna multitask. Let's warm the three things up, at least three things. Right hand comes to the ear. Give me three of those, two, Three. Second thing that goes on, two things go on. The left hand drops down. How? The left hand drops down. Two things happen. Hand to the ear, left hand drops down. Ear and hand. Ear and hand. Okay, and when we do this, we're thinking ear and hand, yes, and we're doing that. But make sure now it's not purely just a hand motion but something that's thought through and you're using your core. Three things happen. We're gonna step out from a T stance to an L stance and continue with the hand to the ear and the hand coming down. Three things happen. First bear down on the right, T stance. Move L, turn the hips and waist, Brush your knee, adjust the back foot. The right hand catches a ball coming in the center of you. The left hand is holding a top of a ball to the side of your, your thigh. Good bow stance, right? Now, sit back and sit down on that imaginary stool to alleviate the weight of the front. Pivot. T stance first and set it up correctly. We're doing the other side. Three things happen, what are they? Ear, hand comes down, heel comes down. Turn the hips and waist, move the energy through to brush your knee. The left hand should be catching a ball in the center of you. The left is the uh, leg is your arrow, but should not be uh, uh, locked in. The right foot should be advanced, the knee not be on the toe. The right hand is holding a ball to the side of your, your uh, thigh. Okay, 
allows you then to sit back and sit down on that imaginary stool, twist step, center with a ball on a T stance. Okay, so the ball is right hand chest level, the left hand is two inches below your navel in your danten, you're centered. The elbows need to come in a, a little slightly, not flared out like this, but why? We're centering ourselves. We're consolidating our energy towards the center on a T-stand. The energy lies on our right. We want to dispense it to get into an L-stance to part the wild horse's mane. Our left foot is ready to go. Our bottom hand is also left, so therefore we know it's correct. Left, left. To part the wild horse's mane, we're going to come out as if to uh, go up the horse's mane, okay? T stance, step out on an L, bottom hand advances, move the energy from the back foot, go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, twist step. Root down, center with a ball on a T stance. Notice that our right foot is weightless and our right hand is on the bottom, therefore we are correct. T stance, step out L, bottom hand advances, turn the hips and waist, move the energy, part the wild horse's mane. Flip the forward hand so you no longer see the palm. Join it with the left hand and face the palm towards you. We're in a bow stance. We want to, we're at three o'clock. We want to get out to nine o'clock on the face of a clock. Sit back, sit down, twist step, turn the hips and waist, you get to 12. How do we get up to the nine? Pivot on the heel of your left foot. There's nine o'clock. But nine o'clock, two things happen. We flip the hands, exchange the places, and close our feet. Turn our hips and waist to drive our movements to 12. Turn our hips and waist a little bit more to get to three. Two things happen. Flip the hands, open the feet. 12 o'clock, turn the hips and waist a little bit more. This time only one thing happens, we flip the hands. Turn the hips and waist, we get to 12. But at three o'clock, two things happen. We flip the hands, we close the feet. 12 o'clock, what happens at nine? Two things, flip the hands, open the feet. 12 o'clock. We want to get out of cloud hands, so at 3 o'clock, we only flip the hands. But at 12 o'clock, we shift our weight to the left foot. We come up as a golden cockerel. Come down, shift our weight, ground down on the right, push down with the right hand, pull up with the left, down, 50-50. We want to gather the energy, want to center the energy. Right hand is on the outside. And we're going to kick out right, down. Shift the weight to the right. Left hand on the outside, left foot ready to go. Kick out left, holding our ball on a T stance. Right here now, you should feel that the energy is all on our left, and you should feel relaxed. The, the shoulders should be dropped, and it's sent, your ball is centering you, so you're in a real optimal position. You're obeying gravity. T stance. L stance. Bottom hand advances to ward off our opponent. Use your forearm to push out your opponent. Good Tai Chi posture. Turn the hips and waist, reposition the hands. You're gonna pull the opponent down as if to grasp the bird scale. Sit down, sit back, look back. Contact, 
turn the hips and waist, center of the body, push the energy through, separate the energy, roll back, sit down, spiral up, lunge forward, sit back, sit down, twist step, root down on the right, right hand on the bottom to hold your ball, Optimal position, T stance. We're going to ward off our opponent. How? Step out on an L. Bottom hand advances to forearm. Turn the hips and waist. Forearm your opponent. Turn the hips and waist. Reposition the hands. Grasp the bird's tail. Pull back. Pull down. Sit back. Turn at the hips and waist contact. Turn again. Push from the center. Separate the energy. Roll back. Sit down. Spiral up. Lunge forward. I'm going to apparently close. Sit back. Sit down. Pivot in. Pivot out. Pivot in. Embrace the tiger with the right hand inside the cross. Shift the weight over. Rotate on your wrists so that now your palms are facing you. Bring the tiger slightly closer to your chest. Push him away one last time. Separate the energy. Palms are down. Shoulder width away. What do you do? Make yourself small. How? Drop your shoulders. Tuck your elbows. Let gravity take you back home as you flex your knees. Wrap around, up on the heel, on the toe, off the ground, toe, arch, heel. Closing form. Okay? So, at the end, when you uh, close, you're still in a semi-squat position, and then you keep the position, and don't, don't, you don't necessarily have to shoot up and get back into out of Tai Chi position. So, what, what's important is that, okay, and, and with the Yang Ten form and the, most of the forms, where we started, we tend to go back at the end. So we want to make the adjustment and take a, a few uh, inches forward, okay? So that's the nature, the characteristic of um, positioning that just occurs. Nothing is wrong. So this is Yang Ten form, good Tai Chi posture, dropping the shoulders, tucking the butt, hollowing the chest, chin slightly down, not parallel to the ground, vision out into infinity, tongue on our palate, good thoughts, and of course our suspended head, okay? Commencing form, you're at 50-50. Shift weight to the, to the right, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, open, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Hands rotate to the middle. Take a deep breath in as you elevate both hands as if you're drawing up water. At shoulder level, we're gonna reverse the process. Drop the shoulders, flex the knees, push down. Leave the left hand in the middle as the right hand rises up. Open the palms to the ceiling as you glance. Bring it to the head and ear area. Turn the head and neck. Meet the hands in the middle. Push forward, pull back as if to repulse the monkey. Leave the right hand in the center. Left hand rises up higher as you glance at it. Open the palms. Bring it to the ear. Turn the head and neck. Meet the hands in the center. Push forward, pull back. We're going to brush our knee. T stance, set it up correctly. Right hand higher, left hand to your uh, armpits or shoulder, okay? T stance, we're going to multitask. Let's warm it up. The top hand comes to the ear. How? Top hand comes to the ear. Bring it back out. Two things happen. The left hand comes down as the top hand comes to the ear. Two things happen. Here, go. Ear down. Again, ear down. Three things happen. 
We're going to step out with our left heel as we turn our hips and weight. Ear down, heel. Turn the hips and waist. Brush your knees. Sit back. Sit down. Twist step. Left hand higher, right hand to your shoulder. T stance. Three things happen. Ear and hand and down and heel. Turn the hips and waist. Brush your knees. Sit back. Sit down. This is a drill because we didn't warm it up. Twist step. Right hand higher, left hand to the shoulder, T stance. Three things happen. Ear, hand, and heel. Turn the hips and waist. Brush your knees. Sit back. Sit down. Twist step. Left hand higher, T stance, right hand to the shoulder, glancing at the left or higher hand. Three things happen. Ear, hand comes down, heel comes out. Turn the hips and waist, brush your knee. Sit back, sit down, twist step, right hand higher, left hand to the shoulder, T stance. Three things happen. Ear, hand, and heel. Turn the hips and waist, brush your knee. Sit back, sit down, twist step. Left hand higher, T stance, right hand to your shoulder. All together, ear, hand, and heel. Turn the hips and waist, brush your knee. Sit back, sit down, twist step, hold your ball. Okay, that one we're going to have to, uh, remember, I'll have to remember to warm up, but so far so good. Um, let's go back now. We're doing, um, leaving, we left off on brush knee, and we're going to go back into the 10 form. After brushing our knee, we're going to hold our ball, okay? I'm going to start you here. Hold your ball. We're going to part the wild horse's mane, and after that, we're getting into cloud hands. T stance. Step out on an L, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, twist step, hold your ball on a T stance. Step out on an L, bottom hand advances to go up the horse's mane. Here begins cloud hands. Listen and do. Flip the forward hand so you no longer see the palm. Join it by the back hand where you can see your palm. They're staggered, right? You're in a, you're in a bow stance. You're gonna sit back and sit down. You're gonna pivot and you're at 12 o'clock. Is that right? Stem and a dangle, stem and a floating hand. How do we get out to nine? Listen carefully and do it. Put the weight on the right so that the left heel can pivot out. You got to nine. Two things happen. What? Flip the hands, close the feet. We'll come back to it and review. 12 o'clock. Use the hips and waist to get to three. Two things happen. Flip the hands, open the feet. 12 o'clock, stem and a dangle. Nine o'clock. Only one thing happens. Flip the hands. 12 o'clock is a stem and a dangle. 3 o'clock, two things happen. Flip the hands. Close the feet. Dangle. 9 o'clock, two things happen. Flip the hands. Open the feet. But at 3 o'clock, we can only flip the hands. But at 12 o'clock, it's setting us up for a what? A golden cockerel. Down, other side, another golden cockerel. Down, we're gonna gather the energy, then we're gonna kick out with our right. Follow the kick with our eyes, follow with our right hand, down, Left hand on the outside, left foot coming up, kick out, left, 
holding our ball. This time we're going to the right first. We're going to ward off. Step out, bottom hand advances to forearm. Turn the hips and waist, reposition your hand. Grasp the bird's tail, pull down your opponent. Turn back, turn forward. Contact, push the energy through. Separate the energy and roll back and sit down. Spiral up and lunge forward. Other side, sit back, sit down. Twist step, hold your ball, and ward off. Step out on an L, bottom hand advances to forearm. Turn the hips and waist, grasp the bird's tail. Turn again, contact, push from the middle. Separate, roll back, sit down. Spiral up and out, apparently close. Sit back, sit down, twist in, twist out, pivot in. Embrace the tiger with the right hand inside the cross. Move that energy over, rotate on your wrist so that your palms are now facing you. Bring the tiger slightly closer to you at your chest. Push him out, palms are down. Drop your shoulders, flex your knees. Let gravity take you back home as you wrap around. Up on the toe, off the ground, toe down, heel down. Okay? So
We're coming to take a double shot. You look at that, yeah? In the crystal ball, in front of the Asian Civilization uh, Museum. See, the fan dancer in the ball, you see that? <laughs>